Professor Wargalese here. We are working on the clock example. I'm hoping you gave this a try on your own and then figured out to use the Z index. We then committed our changes. So I saved the code. We reached a good stopping point and I commit the changes. Save the code, do a commit. Save the code, do a commit. Hopefully that becomes a routine and you're getting used to it by now. And then you'll realize how powerful Git is, especially when you run into a problem. We'll actually introduce a problem in the next complete example. We're going to work on building apps number two, and then we can see how we can roll back the code. Now, we need to finish building apps number one. We added content. We finished the styles. This clock is not doing anything. So this is a static HTML page. We need some functionality. Well, what do I do when I need functionality? HTML is the content. Okay, that's going to be like our skeleton. Now, CSS is the styles. We can change the, how the content looks. And JavaScript is our functionality. So if I want functionality, I need to program with JavaScript. So we've learned three languages so far. We also have jQuery. I've actually imported the jQuery library if you'd like to use that as well. What would be good is try to use the tools I gave you and figure this out on your own. So I recommend stopping the video here try to program the functionality. So we looked at the set interval function. Go to Google, search, how do you set interval in JavaScript? Look at some examples and think about how I can rotate these hands to make the clock fully functional. I recommend stopping the video here and trying that out on your own. I'm gonna keep going, so I'm gonna give you the choice whether you're gonna stop the video or not. But if you stop the video, when you come to the midterm exam, I believe that you will do better because you have tried it on your own and you'll be able to remember these concepts better. Sometimes getting stuck is a good thing. You go to Google, you search the problem, you come and ask me for help, but going through those tough trials will make you a better programmer. So whether you stop the video or not, it's up to you. Before I give up the solution, here's your last chance to stop the video before I continue. Okay, I'm continuing. We said we want to use JavaScript to program functionality. So here are my script tags, and I've already introduced the set interval function for you. So what do I need to do? Well, obviously I need to call the set interval function. Now, can I call the set interval function and rotate these when the script tags are in the head? Well, let's give it a try. Okay, I'm going to do the set interval function. As soon as I type in set, you see brackets knows what function I'm trying to use. I'm going to use set interval, and it requires two parameters. The first parameter is a function that gets called once the set interval is triggered. So here's the function. And the second parameter is when do I want this to be triggered? How many milliseconds? So I'm going to do 1,000 milliseconds. I'm going to close the set interval function, and I'm going to put a semicolon here. Now I'm writing this in one line so you can see the syntax for it. Set interval is a function or a method and it takes two parameters. The first is the function to be called. The second is the amount of time that is going to be triggered. So usually this is not written in one line. You actually open up this function here. But if I did this at the beginning, you'll see the syntax is really funny. I got this weird bracket here with a comma and then a parenthesis and then a semicolon. So that looks kind of funny. But if I write in one line, then you can see it very clearly. So usually it's written like this. You open the brackets up and you'll write the code here. So what do I want to do? Let's say this first set interval function is going to change the second hand. So this is going to be the second hand. And what do I need to do? Well, there's a few ways I can do it. I could just start out and let's say I start at 12 o'clock and whenever they load the page, I start increasing the seconds end. Well, that's not what I want to do. I actually want to show the current time based off where the user is. So if they're in the central time zone, it's going to show central time. If they're in the Pacific or Eastern, it's going to show those times. Well, how do I do that? Well, I can grab the current date, which we've seen before in the previous JavaScript lecture. So I'm going to use the date function and grab seconds. So I'm going to say new date. Date is a function. I can do the dot notation. I can see what I have. I have get date, get day, get hours, get milliseconds, get minutes, month, get seconds. So I'm actually just going to get the seconds here 
and that's going to be according to the local time. If you read this right here, it returns the seconds in the specified date according to the local time. So what it's going to do is going to go get your system clock and pull the seconds from the system clock based on that computer. Now, most computers will alter the time based off the time zone. So it's going to be local to that computer based off which time zone it is. So I'm going to call the get seconds method. And now I need to use this. Now remember, get seconds is going to return either zero to 59. And now I want to rotate this arm around. So let's first just rotate it and then we'll figure out the formula here in a second. So I'm going to use jQuery. I'm going to select this list item here based off the ID. So remember jQuery uses CSS selectors. So I can use a hashtag second. And now after I've selected it, I want to apply some rotation. Well, we've seen this before. We've rotated divs around in our transition and animation lecture. So I'm going to use the CSS function and I'm going to apply the transformation. Okay, I'm going to apply a transformation using the rotate function. So I'm going to create this rotate function here. This is called second rotate. Okay, it's going to be equal to a string. It's going to be equal to our rotate function. And inside the parameters, I'm going to put in the seconds from the date. I need to close the parameters and then have a semicolon here. So why did I do it this way? Well, rotate needs to have the parameter dynamic. So I need to put the seconds in there dynamically. In order to do this, I can hard code the rotate function, add the seconds here as a parameter, and then this rotate function will have a dynamic parameter based off the seconds from the date. This will get triggered every 1,000 milliseconds. So every one second, I'm going to grab the current seconds. I'm going to put that in the set rotate function. I'm going to apply that using the CSS function. So I'm going to use a transformation here. I'm actually going to use a JSON object. And I'll explain why here in a second. Let's just get this thing to move. So I'm going to say transform colon based off our formula, which is S rotate. So it's going to put the rotate function here with the dynamic seconds. And I'm going to apply a semicolon. Save the file. Refresh the page. We should see some rotation here. Okay, it should be rotating. If everything's correct, I have S rotate here, S rotate here, seconds here, seconds here. Did it look spelled correctly? The selector is correct. Let's see what happens. If I right click the page and do an inspect, go to the console. Okay, we don't see any error. So what's happening? I have the set rotate function here. Based off the documentation from the slides, I've implemented everything correctly. Why is this not working? What I want you to do is take a look, stop the video here. I'm actually going to stop it as well and take a look and figure out why this is not working. After you figure out the solution, after you give it a valid attempt, search Google, try to figure out what's going on, look at the code, Think about what we learned about JavaScript and selectors and jQuery and based off of JavaScript in the head. Okay, this JavaScript in the head and for some reason nothing's moving. Make sure you give it a valid attempt before you continue. That way when you get to the exam and you see this example again, you'll know exactly what's going on. We'll see you in the next video.